because she is the gorgeous Tanushri Datta, who's represented India at Miss Universe pageant, Quito, Ecuador, and placed in the top 10. Thank you so much for removing, you know, so much time out of your busy schedule. We understand you're in New Jersey and it's barely lunchtime there. But all of us are ready after our dinner to share a lot about you. I would like to tell you all that our beautiful guest today is not only all beauty. She is beauty and brain and she is a huge philanthropic at heart. She has contributed a lot to charitable and social uh, causes. She is a public speaker. She is a huge spiritualist at heart. And she is a media celebrity, which goes without saying. And she continues to win our hearts across the globe with her contribution to the Indian community, the Southeast Asian diaspora. Hi, Tanushi. Thank you. How are you doing today? Thank you, Itarti, for the lovely introduction. I'm fine. Thank you. And thank you so much for having me on your live show on your Mitibai film, uh, film festival. It's really a pleasure to talk to all of you guys and share my insights. Likewise, honestly, you know, it is so refreshing to have people who made our childhood fun. We've seen you on screen often, especially in Dole. I think all of us, that is one, uh, you know, comic hit that all of us love. And to have you here uh, giving us insight about the industry, some real time information, all the, you know, secret tips and tricks to making it, uh, if you may call it is absolutely fun you know so i have a few questions for you today and through these questions we will try to educate uh, our audience more about the industry and we want to know a little bit more about you so you're one of the most notable miss india universe who's also a bollywood actress and a public figure so i want to understand more about your unique journaling uh, you know your unique journey from modeling to Miss India and eventually into Bollywood movies because that seems like a very, uh, you know, graph filled with a lot of hard work. Yes, thank you. Um, so I, I've always had this lifelong passion to be in the arts and entertainment field. I developed this uh, desire when I first saw the Miss India pageant in 1994 mm -hmm. when Aishwarya and Kushmita uh, won the pageant and then subsequently they went on to win um, international titles. I was, uh, I was, I was very small that time, you know, uh, I was a kid and I watched that pageant by accident because I was not allowed to stay up that late night. Mm -hmm. So I hid and I saw the pageant uh, while my mom was watching and from there the desire developed to someday see myself on that stage. I just didn't know how I would ever get there. But like they say that when you have a vision, uh, when you have a goal and when you are very sure and convinced about it, the universe conspires to lay down the path in front of you. And I think that's what happened with me. I was a very geeky, awkward kid. And somehow my mother decided to fix me up a little bit. You know, uh, I had like rabbit teeth and soda glasses and all that. So she just decided to beautify me a little bit, thinking that, Who's ever going to marry this girl? You know, if she looks that geeky, you know, I was really, really geeky. Like you have no idea. Like I would have like buck teeth and really thick soda glasses, uh, very scrawny. And my hair was always kept short. So while she started beautifying me with her own purpose to get me married off, you know, when I came of age after my studies and everything, I was secretly thinking of joining uh, modeling and beauty pageant. Uh, long story short, I was sent to Pune um, to finish my high school after mm -hmm. 10th grade. I taught my 10th grade uh, when I taught my school. And then in Pune, I you know started modeling. I started doing college modeling. I, I did some modeling in school as well. I started taking part in local beauty pageants. I won some local beauty pageants. And then I went on to you know do some professional modeling and take part in Miss India. Miss India happened. After I won Miss India, I was sent to Miss Universe to represent mm -hmm. India at the Miss Universe pageant in uh, Quito, Ecuador in 2004. After I came back, uh, Bollywood offers uh, were coming to me. And mm -hmm. I knew that this is the next step in my evolutionary journey as uh, a media person. 
so i took up the film offers that came and then the rest is glowed so in short that's my journey not very unique but it is unique for me yeah of course no i think it's unique because um, you know you called yourself geeky but at the same time you went ahead to say that you were thinking about pursuing modeling so i want to understand that you know what motivated you at that young age when you were probably still battling with you know why do i look like this or why do i look like that so what motivated you at such a young age to pursue modeling you know kids kids don't think uh, very logically actually if you look at a kid the kid a kid's brain functions very differently than an adult brain um as a kid when i saw the beauty pageant on tv i just knew that i wanted to get there i didn't see myself before i had the desire you know kids want what they want you know kids don't think am i capable of it do i look like it or can i get it do i have do i come from the family background that will allow me kids don't think anything kids just say i want this and at heart i'm still a kid because even today i look at things and i'm like i want that you know um and today my dreams and ambitions are bigger but even as a kid i didn't run very high on logic so i just wished and wanted it and i may have i was not very religious as a kid but i did come from a little bit of a religious family so i prayed for it you know i asked for it i asked the universe for it i wanted it and i was sure and yes i did look at myself in the mirror once or twice because it became an i don't know how this is going to ever happen but those moments of self realization were far and few primarily i was consumed with the idea of becoming independent because my mother is a housewife and she always told me that i should be independent i should you know have my own identity and i just wanted to have an identity in a field that i liked so that was my motivation and i loved i loved the glamour i loved the fashion i loved the fact that i would get to travel um intuitively and instinctively i knew that this is where i wanted to be so uh, my desire was my motivation my desire to explore the world uh, see more travel more i think that the way you articulated it uh, there was no other way to understand it better and um, I, you mentioned you know traveling performing and you know you had a vision you wanted to get somewhere i'm sure all of these things took a certain skill set so i want you to tell us more about the skill sets that you developed and how you integrated these you know um i would say modeling specific skills or skills that are generally attributed to modeling into bollywood movies or bollywood as uh, an industry so you know modeling per se does not require a very vast array of skill sets basically it's a very visual medium you know um there is a small set of skill sets that you need like you got to pose well you got to know how to walk and those are things that you can imbibe and learn very easily so i had a computer at a very early age and i had access to the internet so i i was always someone who who's i'm still someone who's heavy on research like if i want to get somewhere if i want to get to a place or a person i will know the intestines of that person or that place or anything that i wanted to and nobody really knows that i'm doing all that but i know everything before i get some place so i will right. learn it i will imbibe it i will train myself um and i remember back in the day we didn't have youtube but google was there you know and you could um find out anything that you wanted to find out uh, not as much as you could today so i did train myself i read through fashion magazines i didn't go to any training program but while i took part in school beauty pageants college beauty pageants and local amateur professional uh, professional portfolios that is what trained me to reach the level of miss india so what i'm trying to say is that today you guys might have access to a lot more than i had access to back in the day today you have coaching schools training schools for acting modeling everything back in the day we didn't have access to much but where there is a will there is a way and i have always had a very strong will um so i did manage to prepare myself sufficiently to you know to do a good job 
uh, how did I integrate my modeling skills into Bollywood? Well, when you've been a professional model for a few years, you do get confident in front of the camera. You mm -hmm. get confident in front of, uh, you know, not only still camera, but also moving camera. Mm -hmm. You, I did do a lot of ad films and stuff before I got into movies, um, before I won the Miss India, after I won the Miss India. So it was a natural progression for me to act on screen because I had acted on screen. When you're doing, um, uh, when you're doing an ad film, you're acting for 30 seconds. When you're doing a film, uh, you know, your single shot might be a one minute tape or a two minute tape. Not much of a difference, actually. You're still acting is basically expressing your intent about a particular topic, about something. Uh, so intuitively, I had the ability and my modeling experience definitely uh, gave me the confidence to face the camera. Good to know. I think that um, a few pointers that you pointed out there when it comes to uh, being more around cameras, being comfortable, and you know being in that particular space really helped you to you know transition into acting or being on bollywood screens and the 30 second ads so what i want to understand is what is your take on formal training for acting and modeling do you think it's necessary uh today i would say definitely because you know with each passing year competition is growing uh, the year i came into bollywood there were just three newcomers you know, who uh, came into the industry. Um, I remember when I used to go for auditions, when I was new in Bombay, there would be like six or seven people at an audition. Today, if you go to an audition, there'll be like 100 people. Back in the day, we could just walk into an audition without appointment or invitation. You, got, you get, go in for one audition, you decide to go in for two, three other auditions in the same area. Today, that doesn't happen. Today, you can only go for an audition if you're invited for it. So you can understand the kind of competition that exists today. So I would definitely tell everyone if they're interested in joining this field to go for formal training, because when you do formal training, you don't just learn the skill. You also learn, you also imbibe, uh, learn the soft skills. You're told about the soft skills and you also imbibe the culture of the industry. So it's almost like uh, going to, MBA coaching, right? Mm -hmm. Back in the day, maybe 30 or 40 years ago, uh, people ran businesses, they ran big organizations, but very few were MBA coached, right? Um, they either took it over from family or they just had the skills. But today, anybody who wants to get into business is going in for a formal MBA coaching, even if they're from a business family, even if they already have grown in that environment, simply because mm -hmm. The times are such that everybody is very prepared. Uh, my sister uh, started acting much after me, and I advised her to go for acting school. And what she learned in one year, or maybe six months, I don't know how long that course was, what she learned in that entire course was worth two years of training mm -hmm. that one would learn on the job. So if one can afford it, and if one has the time, and if one really wants to be ahead of the game it's always good to go for coaching you know and there's another way if you can't afford formal coaching there is so much on youtube today we live in the age of information not just for acting and modeling but i would say anybody any kid any kid growing up anybody who's in their teens 20s 30s even if you are looking at a career change if you're looking at building a career in any field and you feel like you don't have the resources or you can't afford to go for formal training or you don't have the time because you're already juggling maybe two jobs, you know, mm -hmm. uh, I would recommend to have access to the this age of information that mm -hmm. allows you to learn anything at the click of a button. You can be anywhere in the world and you can learn things from YouTube. You can learn things from the net. There are a lot of people who are just giving this information away for free, training you for free online coaching and all of that. So I think today, if anybody wants to get somewhere, they should definitely uh, coach themselves or you know, get the hang of uh, the space. Don't just go in blind because you don't know what you're gonna encounter and you're gonna be like all like, you know, yeah. Oh, well, okay, so that was great. 
I think that the I see how you put emphasis on self learning as well, which I'm sure that you think is a uh, very important. And you yourself said that you would read a lot of fashion magazines and you would learn from them, try to curate things for yourself. So I want to understand that through your journey, how was what were the typical differences when you prepared for Miss India and when you prepared for Miss Universe? Like, can you please draw a comparison? Yeah. So I also watched a lot of fashion TV. By the way, I want to put it in there. I remember in my eleventh grade and twelfth grade. Uh, you know high school i was stuck to the tv and i never let any of the other girls in my hostel watch tv because i was i always had fashion tv on um that's besides the point but um, my training for miss india um and miss universe was not very different um basically my training for miss universe was just an extension of my training for miss india i i had like 20 days to leave for miss universe after miss india Mm-hmm. so they pretty much had trained me times of india which is a parent company of uh, femina miss india they had pretty much trained me for everything that i needed for miss universe uh what i did extra was i worked on my physique because i knew that at miss universe uh we would have a public bikini round which was not there in miss india so miss india pageant doesn't have a public platform a swimsuit round as mm-hmm. opposed to the international pageant obviously mm-hmm. because of the cultural differences the swimsuit round in miss india is held privately uh, you know you only have the judges and the organizers and a small group of people right but the swimsuit round in miss universe is actually a part of the entire public event where you have like a 100000 people on venue watching you in a gown round and watching you in the you know question answer round they're also watching you when you're wearing a bikini and walk up, ramping on stage so for me getting into top level fitness uh, was of prime importance so that's where they focused the most i worked out 2 hours a day uh, as opposed to 1 hour in miss india my diet became more strict my um, my wardrobe uh, you know was obviously to international standards mm-hmm. and i was also coached and trained in doing makeup really fast because mm-hmm. the curriculum at miss universe is like a full day curriculum that sounds like like you already mentioned there has been a, there has been a lot of hard work you cannot just walk the stage and uh, be miss india or miss universe one day it takes a lot of um, physique building like you said health mental health a lot of things a co- amalgamation of multiple skills so exactly uh, could you point out you know what were your challenges when you were trying to work towards miss india or when you were trying to become a model or when you switched to acting so what were the top 3 struggles i would say that you would encounter that we can expect as you know budding artists right so see any any career or profession will not come without a set of challenges and any career or profession if one has to build it is going to take a lot of hard work and effort very often people make the mistake of assuming when they look at artists because artists look glam they're looking you know they're on screen they're smiling and it's all so glam people make the mistake of assuming that oh they don't do anything but if you go into the details of every profession there is a lot of effort work strategic um effort that goes into the building of a career in any profession so i'll start with my modeling career the biggest challenge in my modeling career that i faced initially was that i was from a small town i was not from mumbai mumbai i modeled in pune i won some local beauty pageants in pune and then i moved to bombay because i thought hey i'm already a professional model in pune i was one of the one of the highest paid models in pune while i was modeling there you know i i modeled for a lot of these good brands that were launching um in pune these corporate brands as well as bombay designers when they would do fashion shows in pune they would hire models local models like me when i came to bombay i was a small fish in a big pond when i was in pune modeling i was a big fish in a small pond when i came to mumbai i felt lost i was like oh these models are taller they are better they've taken part in national beauty pageants international beauty pageants you know we had miss india glad rags we had a lot of these 
big pageants and mm-hmm. the bombay models were far more professional they were far more sophisticated you know groomed more polished right. groomed yeah groomed more polished i didn't feel that groomed so i would go for auditions and i would get rejected so i would do hundreds of auditions hundreds you know like every day i would wake up go for the auditions that i would get called for and go for the auditions that i didn't get called for like i would make friends and be like oh where is the next audition happening and you know people are friendly back in the day we were all very like friendly like that and they would be like oh hey this audition is happening why don't you go and try out for that hundreds of rejections later i would bag a job where maybe somebody else has backed out and they need a model last minute and i get in so you go through these struggles you groom yourself because you start working and then through work you get appreciated you develop little more confidence after miss india okay after modeling miss india now the challenge at miss india was that um i was deemed overweight i um you know the organizers had singled out a few girls who they felt were not uh, to optimum fitness so i was put in the overweight section so i had to do run up and down the stairs 10 times uh over and above the workout that we all were doing so what i'm trying to say is that every stage it never gets easy it is easy but it also has its own set of challenges and i've had to overcome those challenges so they're not challenges that you cannot overcome you know you just got to follow the instruction that has been given to you you got to train yourself continue to believe in your goals and ambitions that okay this is where i have to get and these are my shortcomings these are my uh, setbacks these are my challenges how do i overcome it moving on from miss india the path to bollywood became very easy but then when i came to bollywood i felt lost again because here i was lots of star kids and you know kids from girls and boys from uh, film families and people that grew up in bombay far more groomed but then i had to work on myself again keep working keep working you know some projects work some projects don't work you just got to keep work so you just tirelessly kept striving and came over each obstacle that came you know you came across because i think that's a part of being uh, in such a dynamic industry but um, what i want to understand is was it always a field of your interest or you know something clicked and it switched so what industry do you prefer more like in this case after you you know made up your mind would you want to be a model or would you want to be an actress well like i said it was always my field of interest and acting and modeling at least in india are very related you know in the us uh, where i'm at uh, they're vastly different and models often don't switch over to acting and actors don't model too much but in india um uh, the industries are quite interrelated so yeah when i wanted to be a miss india at such a young age you know um i didn't think of being an actress at that point of time but when i won the miss india pageant um it it became very obvious that i would get offers from bollywood i knew it um you know people started telling me that oh now you're going to be a bollywood star you know it's only a matter of time i knew it because right from the time i won i started getting offers i couldn't take it up that time because i had to go for miss universe the moment i came back from miss universe 3 days later i got i started getting calls from the times of india office and they were like someone's calling for you this movie that movie managers film managers started calling me are you interested in movies and i was like yeah okay you know i knew this was the next um, step in my evolution as a uh, as a model miss india media personality so i took up the best offers that came my way whatever i understood at that point of time and um, uh, what would i prefer i would um as an indian uh, media celebrity i think i would uh, i would continue to model and act um now that i'm you know getting back to the workspace again i would do both yeah yeah i was on a sabbatical for uh, about 12 years um uh so now when i get back into the media space i would 
definitely do both i wouldn't choose i understand so all the missed opportunities have to be you know uh, looked after and you're on your way to uh, you know new opportunities as and when they come which is quite refreshing i must say because you've been in the industry for quite long and being that confident and that receptive at uh, this stature when you're already an established artist and you you know you publicly declare the sabbatical that's amazing i think that um you know if not i i cannot envision anybody else other than you who could put that across that confidently you know when it comes to this bit of the conversation so what i want to understand from this aspect of uh, who you are is that um, what is your regime to maintain your physical and mental health because i'm sure that with um, you know all the things and all the criticism the constructive criticism that comes along you have to take care of your mental health as well so tell us a little bit more about your personal care ideologies so um you know it's getting better in the industry but when i started off the criticism was not always constructive it was vicious you know right uh, today i think uh, the psyche and the industry and uh, psyche related to artists and art is evolving people have started accepting it as an industry an industry that creates jobs an industry that is you know churns revenue right. so people's perception and ideas about the film industry and people who work in the film industry has evolved a lot but back in the day i felt like a zoo animal a lot you know because yeah i mean uh, when i started off one of the stark differences that i noticed in the corporate field in uh, the rest of the um, workforce because i had done part time while i was modeling in pune i did do part time uh, you know in in typical regular office setups and stuff like that um uh, summer jobs and stuff like that i was always very independent and progressive thinker i didn't want to take uh, help from my parents to pay for my portfolio or for my pictures and stuff i actually worked my way through to pay for all of that uh, i didn't ask my dad i mean he would help me out with my pocket money but i earned my own um portfolio um funds so i knew the difference between that space and how people perceive uh, artists and actors it was vicious because if you put on a little bit of weight or if if you're repeating an outfit or if you didn't quite look right because you're tired you'd get sh- torn to shreds you know that was a psyche back in the day and for a long time lately people have become much more kinder and compassionate um and i've accepted that okay hey just like you have doctors engineers you have other professionals here are these guys and they can have their bad hair days or they can have their days and you know years and ups and downs so so mental health yeah i've had to struggle to keep my sanity intact and to 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 walk that fine line of creativity um and sanity because very often as a creative person with with the life that we have with with the kind of uh, mass hysteria that sometimes we generate mm-hmm. uh it it can really go dark pretty soon you know <laughs> like uh like example being cricket stars you know when they lose a match their homes get stoned so yeah. actors also we go through a gamut of uh, emotions as such by the virtue of our job but we also go through all of these ups and downs because of the way the public reacts to our life so our public life private life it kind of gets jumbled a lot and right. that's what creates the mess so it's a work in progress i i i guess that's why a lot of actors would probably not say that in public but a lot of entertainers and artists do have a parallel uh, counseling life going on like they do take therapy and counseling to cope mm-hmm. with the pressures of public life and a lot of people who are in for high functioning individuals who are public figures um apart from keeping their health and fitness intact which is easy you go to the gym you work out yoga and all of that um but you also got to have a system in place to keep your mental health intact because right. it is not like a regular field where you're isolated you know from the public and public opinion 
they're in fact in the line of fire a lot. Right. So for me, it was yoga and meditation, my spiritual path, which kind of kept me sane, and my workouts and fitness and all of that. That sounds like work twenty four seven. It's a lot. It's a lot of work. Yeah, I mean, to work is work. To work is work. To to succeed is work. To maintain that success is work, and yeah. to maintain your sanity in that success is also work. Of course, to build relationships is work. To maintain those relationships is also mm-hmm. work. And if those relationships are not working out, to let go of them is also work. We cannot escape work in the world mm-hmm. as long as we are there. everything around us requires effort in 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 that space we find our stillness so i'm not somebody who's who's chasing after things all the time mm-hmm. I, i i i achieve a lot uh, whether in the spiritual field or in the material field or physical personal i but at the same time i find my space of stillness that space of stillness is what gives you your sanity um, so that's why people do yoga meditation you know whatever else works for them religion and spirituality and stuff like that definitely i think that mind is something that we should learn to switch off and that is a skill set and an art in itself and that only comes with practice as you said so tell us a little more about uh, you know something on these lines that what are the few most important things that you have learned from industries dominated by performing arts so you know industries that are dominated by performing arts there's one peculiar thing about the artistic field which is not there in any other field is you have you come across a wide range of people in mm-hmm. in this field right so for example if you're working in a corporate company you pretty much can predict the you know the lineup from top to bottom mm-hmm. they're all going to be of a certain educational qualification so if you're working in a multinational company for sh- for example you know what crowd you're going to encounter they're all going to be 30% of them are going to be ivy league educated or maybe 50% the rest are going to be still uh, you know, top league colleges pass outs graduates mm-hmm. if you work in a less than a multinational company you know what crowd you're going to expect in the artistic field you don't know what crowd you're going to expect you could be working with somebody who's 10th pass you could be working with somebody who's had no education whatsoever you can be working with someone who comes from a very high strata of society very polished uh, family background by virtue their behavior reflects that or you could be working with uh, someone who's uh, complete savage you know coming from a ghetto and just like uneducated person you know rough mm-hmm. rough person mm-hmm. so the soft skills and the very important aspect of working in the artistic field is a to keep people at distance who you can sense are not going to be gelling well with you you know they're not going to gel well with you not because they're not talented or artistic they won't gel with you because they come from a very different family background that you are from or they come from a very different educational background that you are from and mm-hmm. their sophistication level is vastly different from yours so even though they may be very talented and you may be very talented you're not going to get along well because there's going to be such a communication gap or such an attitude attitudinal gap between that there's going to be conflict and that is why we often hear about huge conflicts in you know in the film industry during shootings and stuff like that it is because this is one field where you don't always get to choose the people that you're working with and they come from you know sometimes they come from different kind of backgrounds and stuff so mm-hmm. diplomacy is a key is a tool that one can use mm-hmm. to navigate and mitigate uh, yourself through the industry mm-hmm. and um, diplomacy and what do you call it um, discri- discriminatory ability mm-hmm. so just just a lot of budding artists and budding models entertainers actors uh, artists in general you know they don't have the discriminatory ability because their drive to express their art supersedes their ability to discriminate between people and situations so for artists for young artists i would like to say believe in your art believe in your talent 
whether it's modeling, acting, dancing, music, whatever it is, believe in yourself and hold yourself up until the time you meet the right people to work with. Because if you come across the wrong people, and by wrong people, I mean people whose attitudes are wrong about, about the industry, about the work, about the talent, they can kill your art. And that art will die with, inside of you. So because this is a field where the range of characters of people and caliber of people and personal uh, behavior, you know, behaviors and attitudes of people can be so vastly different. It's not an MNC where everybody is like highly educated, highly sophisticated. You could come across people very talented, but very crude. So use the discriminatory ability, even if you're new. Don't jump into things. Key, oh, I'm getting an opportunity. Let me just quickly grab it. Because mm -hmm. you could find yourself amongst people who will kill the art and the craft in you. Uh, so that is the only piece of advice. That is my only, uh, you know, broad insight that I have mm -hmm. received. Because I've gotten from my experience, which I can share with, you know, kids who are aspiring to get in to stuff. Okay. So uh, it has been lovely. Hope that makes sense. Huh? It has been I lovely. Make sense. However, uh, you know, the Instagram algorithm is going to throw out throw us out soon. I'm really worried about that because I have so many more questions and I'm like, how do okay. I get this all across? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a quick rapid round now. I'm going to ask you two questions. You need to answer in one word, okay? You cannot give me any experience. Okay, okay. okay. Which industry do you prefer? The Tamil, Telugu, oh. or uh, which film industry do you prefer more? Tamil, Telugu, or Hindi? You have three seconds to answer this. Three, two, one. Oh, no, no, none. I, <laughs> I'm, I'm okay. Oh, okay. Hollywood. Okay. I would prefer Hollywood. <laughs> Oh, I, I, I'm kidding. I can't choose. Really, I can't choose. Hmm. I must email David Flincher for your next feature film. He needs to bring you on there. You're already in New Jersey. It's just a flight away. Hmm. Okay. Three soft skills that every performing artist should possess. Diplomacy, mm -hmm. patience, mm -hmm. And um, tenacity. Wow. You should have done a few more rapid rapid rounds. Your <laughs> this is crazy. I, I thought it was going to take a little bit longer, but wow. Okay. Um, I mean, I'm only responding to you and your questions. So, you know. Hmm. And now I can bring up more questions. Okay. Thank you so much. Mm, okay. Let's go to... Your mantra. What is Ms. Tanushri Dutta's mantra? Be repetitive, be boring, but be consistent. Hmm. You want me to explain? Then I'll explain. <laughs> if not, then no, I'll leave you. We really love it when you explain it to us. I'm just, I just don't want a conversation to get cut off in the middle of the... That's it. absolutely hate this algorithm, but unfortunately this is where we can have most of our students viewing us. So... Yes, please do go ahead and explain that to us. What did I say? Uh, repetitive effort, boring, but consistent. Meaning that in life, sometimes when you have to achieve success, you may have to do the same things over and over again. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you do the same, you do something, you don't achieve success and people leave it thinking it's not working. No, it's, it's, it's going to work at the right time, mm -hmm. at the right place with the right people. So very often, uh, Successful people and highly functional and high achievers are also boring people because they've learned one thing. You cannot do different things, uh, too many different things, hoping that you'll achieve success in one. You have to find your passion, know what you're passionate about, and just keep doing that over and over again and make it better. Tweak it, uh, enhance it. Essentially, you're doing the same thing over and over again, repetitively mm -hmm. and consistently. Right. But Eventually, you will arrive at a sweet spot. You know, right. Which is success. It's the same thing with workout. It's the same thing with diet. It's the same yeah. thing with career. It's yeah. the same thing with styling. It's the same thing with anything, anything in the world you think of. Right. It does require repetition to the point of boredom mm -hmm. and consistency. Apart from the will, apart from the, you know, 
self belief and all of that but the core point is this you know you've got to just keep at it that is the so when you say be repetitive and you say be consistent i see that there is a journey that you've been through and we've seen it on your instagram we want to understand your journey towards spirituality considering you've had you know you've ha- spent a lot of consistent effort trying to pursue this how did this develop and just give us an insight with a few words so that we can understand and you know close this session with a peaceful note and try to explore ourselves as well so um i've i've been interested in this space from from the time i was a kid i i i i figured it out in depth greater and greater depth as i grew mm-hmm. i started with reading books like polo kohelo and all of that when i was a teenager mm-hmm. moved on to exploring yoga as a physical discipline to maintain health as an alternative to gymming and weight training which is the commonly accepted form of you know weight you know weight mm-hmm. loss and physique building but when i discovered yoga i felt i felt like it had so many more benefits compared uh, as opposed to just having a you know coming in shape and looking good i moved on after that to meditation and more deeper disciplines within yoga so yoga is actually on the surface of the spiritual discipline beyond yoga uh, yoga just prepares you for meditation and for the deeper disciplines so as i took went on a sabbatical journey you know as i took a sabbatical from films a couple of years ago i had the time in hand to actually pursue these deeper disciplines i got trained by some of the best teachers and gurus that we have on the planet today and i was an ardent student devotee um and trainee mm-hmm. um of a lot of these different uh, you know teachers organizations institutions religions even so i've studied multiple religions uh, hinduism christianity buddhism and uh, a little bit of a lot of different things so this was my prime preoccupation in these um 12 years that i have not been actively a part of bollywood or acting uh, i did do some stuff here and there like i i maintained my celebrity uh, status by appearing at events and endorsing products and oh. endorsing companies and stuff that was to maintain my lifestyle and my my you know my thing but my primarily primary vocation was the spiritual journey and path and uh it's very hard to kind of put in a nutshell what i discovered because it's like this whole world of discoveries that i made i guess one has to walk that path but i can't say that it is a worthwhile journey to over und- undertake go through and endure because the insight that you gain about yourself about the world about other fellow human beings and your own larger purpose in life is invaluable that is something each person has to discover for themselves i can tell you the path that i have, I have taken i can tell you the insights that i have gained about love life success and everything under the sun but eventually for you to know that about yourself you have to walk your own path mm-hmm. you have to walk your own path and journey in the material world in the spiritual world in life you know and everything i can i can tell you what i love but for you to know what you love and what you would love for the rest of your life and how you can contribute to this world in a greater way and not just live for yourself and then die off one day but how you can make that small contribution that will immortalize you in this world that is something that you have to figure out for yourself i can tell you oh upar upar se okay this is what i did this is what i i did but each person has to walk their own path and that is spirituality in a nutshell i think that could have been articulated better you leave us with an open ended interpretation to what spirituality can be and uh, this definitely was a great session i felt that i learned a lot i'm sure the uh, hearts are raining in and there are multiple comments filled with love too many questions that we couldn't ask you but then you know i was also no offense on the uh the rapid round that was just for fun i mean i just wanted to engage you in some quick questions 
so i hope that all of us get an opportunity to meet offline and uh, i did learn a thing or two uh, from you without you uh, you know obviously voicing it out in terms of presentation in terms of articulation and in terms of um, how uh, you interact as a celebrity as a human being as a person who has had a spiritual journey and i think that has that has just made all our days and nights better a uh, day for all the people who are in new jersey and night for all of those who are in mumbai so before you leave just a uh, two encouraging words for the students who are trying to pursue acting or modeling as a career so i would let me see what what can i say mm. i want to tell everyone out there who's going to watch this interview from your college outside of your college anywhere um if you are pursuing acting and modeling media field artistry music dance anything creative you know um it's it's a difficult life choice that you're going to be making know this if you are planning to do this full time um it is not a, a a profession where your mindset can be the same as what you would have if you were to pursue mba or any other field you know you're not going to have a regular salary coming in every month uh you know or provident fund and all of that but what you're going to derive in your heart and in your mind it will be a different kind of satisfaction because to be able to express yourself creatively and make a living out of it is the greatest joy that i have experienced in my life and if you can somehow find a balance uh you know between something else that you can do and this then is great if you are a daredevil like me who's you know made this my primary vocation then you know my my best wishes and blessings are always with you and you will have the love and blessings of the entire artistic community because that is one thing that we all that joins us in a common thread we know that how challenging life can get as an artist and you all overcome that and that is why somewhere in our heart we only have blessings for all those who pursue that path and are beginning on that path so uh, you know they say artists um, can sometimes find themselves very alone but then god is with them so <laughs> if you can if you can you know keep that in mind it it will help you along in your journey thank you so much mr tata it has been amazing having a conversation with you and i hope you uh, you know grace our mitiwood film festival event when we have screenings or when we have other talk shows which uh, allow us to explore the industry at length and thank you so much for devoting so much time it's been uh, we've taken more time than we actually were supposed to from you and i was for uh, 40 minutes how long has it been uh it must i i think it's been around 50 minutes and i was supposed to okay, <laughs> so uh, i hope the remaining 20 were like a refresher for you too and added a little bit of a value to your day so hoping to see you, you soon and thank you so much for absolutely. coming to me thank you thank you thank you bye bye